I'm looking at the data right now. There are columns A through J. And basically every row in this data set is an individual um, individual episode from friends. So for instance, in row number two, we have the date September 22nd, 1994. And I'm not sure why episode is a date format, but I'm gonna convert this into, I think a number. So we have the date, which is nine, December, September 22nd, 1994, episode number one. The title is called The Pilot. And if we expand column D, it's directed by James Burroughs, written by David Crane and Marta Kaufman. Duration is 22 minutes. So I'm guessing it's 22 minutes with ad breaks. And the summary is, actually, let me just do a word wrap on just this one column. Or actually, just on this one cell. Let's go to Format Properties, and let's do Alignment, and do Wrap Text. So it says, Monica and the gang introduce Rachel to the real world after she leaves her fiancé at the altar. So that's the summary column, column G. And columns H, I, and J is the ratings per share. Um, I used to work in TV, I forget what the share means, but I think that's the total share of the audience on that night. And then the US viewers, that's the number of viewers that watch this in total. So I think this is like assuming 200 million households, so 21.5 million people watch this first episode. And the production code, I'm not sure what this is. I'm just gonna delete this column for now. So the only columns that we have in our data set are date, episode, title, directed by, written by, duration, summary, rating slash share, and then US viewers. So if I scroll down below, you can kind of see the show runs from 1984 all the way through 2004. Um, so I'm gonna kind of clean this data set up before I throw it into a pivot table. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just for the US viewers, like I want this to be a number, like right now this is a text because it says 21.5 space and the word million. And I'm gonna convert this into um, an actual number. So let's, let's actually do the, I wanna just capture the 21.5 out of this column. So I'm gonna do something like equals mid, actually I'm gonna do left, take the call left and then take the cell comma, number of characters, it's gonna be the find. I wanna find to find the space because I know there's a space within this text. Uh, and then I think that should be it. Yep, 21.5. So let's just do a trim just to make sure that I'm not capturing any spaces. And I can drag that all the way down. And you can see now I have just the number in the column. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that and multiply it by a million, just so I can get the full number. And there we go. And let's convert these numbers into a number format that I like. So number, format, I'm going to format cells, then number, then using zero decimal places, and then using the 1000 separator. So I'm gonna call this column US viewers like actual because I'm getting the actual number here. Um, another, thing, another thing I like to do in my data set is I like to bold the first row just to show that these are my header titles. And then I'm also gonna freeze the top row as well. So when I scroll, I can see the column name. So I go to view and then freeze top row. And now I can scroll and see what the columns mean. And uh, I'm also gonna kind of get the rating and share into a separate columns too. So let's, let's insert two new columns. I'm right clicking column I, insert, right clicking again. So I have two columns, because right now the rating slash share column has two numbers. It has, for first for the first row, it's 14.7 slash 23. And I want the rating to be in its own column and the share to be in its own column, and it's separated by a slash. So let's call this rating, share, so column I, I want to get the 14.7 in that cell. And I want to be, I basically have to separate out the 14.7 from the 23 
from the um, slash. We can pretty much do the same thing that we did with the US viewers. I can do equals left and then pull in the cell, comma, number of characters is gonna be find the slash and then also within that text and then that's pretty much it. Notice how there is a slash in my ratings column now because I included, when you do the find, it also includes up to the next space. I'm just gonna go minus one, just get rid of that. So now I have the rating in column I, and this is basically everything before the slash. For share, I'm gonna do the mid left parentheses function. The start number is going to be, oops, so the first I get the text, which is column H, and then I'm gonna find the slash comma within this text. And I think that will be it. I'm just gonna pull in like 100 characters for now. And notice how my share column has a slash 23. I'm just going to, the, inside the find function within the mid function, I'm going to say a plus one. So now I have the share in column J. I'm filling that formula down. So now all the numbers are basically in their own columns. And the only ones that I really had to fix were rating, share, and US viewers actual. Um, I'm going to un column G2 or column G. I'm just going to make this unwrap this because I want everything to fit really nicely. Hit OK. Duration is fine. It's a number. And then I think the episode I kind of want to fix too because the episode, these should just be numbers. It just goes from. Actually, I'm really curious how this worked out. 1 through 2, 12, 23, 24. So it looks like it just goes 12. Oh, on January 28th, 1996, it looks like episode 12 and 13 must have been like a one hour special or something. But it looks like it just goes from 1 through 24, 1 through 25, and then repeats. So I think I can actually insert a column after episode. And if I just say equals B2, and I convert this into a number format. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's not what I want. So one, two, three. I think I'm just gonna plot the day because it looks like in my column B, I want this to be the number one, two, three, four, but right now it says one dash Jan, two dash Jan. This will be one of those things where by default, Excel thinks that it's a date, but in reality it's a number. So let's just see if I can pull out the day from this cell, and that looks like it works. I can pull out the one. Yeah, that looks like it works. I'm gonna pull this out and pull this all the way down. And notice how there's some that are not fully numbers. So like for instance, this 12, 13, I'm not sure I'm gonna fix this one. I'm just gonna say 12 slash 13. So I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna fix this, but what I'm gonna do is I noticed that this duration is 44. So I'm just gonna split this into two rows because right now episode 12 and 13 from on January 20th, 1996 was kind of like this double header. So I'm gonna insert a blank new row below this and call this row 12, call this row 13. We'll give it the same date. Everything will be basically the same. And let's copy that. And I think I'm just gonna change the duration manually to 22 for each of these. And I think the rating and share will just leave the same for now. Not the exact best solution, but we'll go for it for now. And let's see if there's anything other, any other data inconsistencies in my new, let's call this episode number column in column C. And let's actually format this to be just one, zero decimal places, because I don't want, doesn't make sense to, for a dec, an episode number to be 1.00. Okay, so let's see what else we got going on here. Yeah, the, on May 20th, 1999, there was another double header episode called The One in Vegas. The gang, uh, the gang go to Las Vegas to visit Joey. Chandler is angry when he finds out Monica had lunch with Richard, etc., etc. So let's just do the same thing we did earlier. Expand this into two rows. So I want to call this one 23, 24 and just copy over all the same data, except the duration, I'm gonna put it as 22 instead of 44 for these two rows. So this will be 22, 22. 
And I think there's one few other ones. This is kind of like the part where you have to do manual work. I don't think there's that many, so I'm just going to do this manually for now. But if there were a lot, I would probably want to do this, find more scalable approach to get this done. This duration was 60, so I'm going to change this one to 30 and 30. And then I think the last... Well, there's actually quite a few, so let me just fix these up really quick. 24, 25. This was on May 18th, 2000. And also change this to 30, 30. Let's see how many left we have. We have three, four, four more to do. So this is kind of like one of the one of the tough parts about data cleanup is that. Um, oh, so this one is interesting. February 15th, 2001, there's a special. There is no episode number. It skips from episode 15 to 16. So I'm going to call this episode number special for now. And I'm not sure what this is. It doesn't give you a summary or anything, but we'll just leave that as that. On May 17, 2001, there was an episode called The One with Monica and Chandler's Wedding. Insert a new column, a new row rather, episode 23, 24. Give the same date. And then again, we're just going to shorten the duration from 44 to 22 for these two rows since it's kind of one of those double headers. I think I only have two more, three more. So I'm just going to do this one really fast. 23, 24. Copy this and change this to 22. Let's see what else we got. On May 15th, 2003, there was two episodes in the same row. So I'm going to fix that one up. 22. And then the last two rows, there's a special called the one before the last one, 10 years of friends. I'm not sure why this one is wrapped. I'm just going to get rid of this wrapping here. And then on May 6th, 2004, that was the very last episode. Um, we're just going to convert this into two rows as well. And then we should be all set to go. Our data should be, in theory, kind of clean now. And this, so on May 6, 2004, the special, we're also going to call this special for the episode number. And it looks like we're all set. OK. So the nice thing about this is the, the important part about before doing any exploratory analysis is just getting our data correct. So right now, I'm, I feel a little more confident about our data, except for on call May, there's some dates that are missing for some reason, like in row 24, episode number 23, this looks like it's from season one. There's no date, so for some reason, there's no date for that episode. And I think everything else should be looking okay. We also had to fill in this special, um, this special column. So one thing I like to do in terms of like, data cleaning, since I did, I did a lot of kind of like formulas to pull out the data I need, I like to hide the columns that I, I formulaically created and then maybe just color them uh, yellow so that people know if I send this off to someone else, they know that this is like, these are columns that I kind of manually fixed up a little bit. Not the perfect coloring scenario, but we'll work with it for now. So now let's start doing some analysis. I'm going to select all my data and then do insert pivot table get a new worksheet. I'm going to call this new worksheet. Let's call this pivot pivot table. Uh, zoom in quite a bit here so you can see what I'm doing. So I have a pivot table. So there's really not a whole lot of information I can do here in terms of a whole lot of analysis I can do. One thing I can do is look at the US viewership um, and look at it maybe by, by date. But I realized in order to look at it by date, instead of looking at by specific dates, I will also I will want to get the month, the day, or the year out of the date. So maybe I'll just do, I'll plot the year to kind of see like which years led to the most viewership or something like that. So call this column year. I could just, in column B, I basically put an empty column called year and the formula is gonna be year, left parentheses, and then put the date in that column. I'm not sure why that turned to a date. Let's go back to number, convert this to a number, hit okay, hit 1084, great, drag this formula down. And now we have the year in column B, which is just pulling out the date. Uh, let's remove the decimal place. So we have the date, and let's refresh my pivot table so it has all the new fields. Ref 
right click and then refresh. So if, if I look at my pivot table fields, I have year, date, whatever. So I'm gonna put year into column into the rows. And then I'm gonna put US viewership, US viewers actual, that's a column that I created, which contains the actual number of viewers as a number, put that at the values. And one thing I like to do with my pivot tables, um, whether I'm Mac or Excel, is to give the classic pivot table design. So I go to pivot table analyze, pivot table options, options here, and then layout. Um, I think it's in layout or is in display. Yeah, in display, there's this classic pivot table layout, hit okay. I just like this because it um, makes it more clear what the columns and rows are. And then to make these numbers um, with, with uh, commas, I'm going to click on values, click on the little eye icon. Now this says pivot table field. I can click on number, change this number to be zero. It does my place, hit okay. And now I can kind of see the total, but what I care about is the average viewership within, um, for the for each year, it's not the sum. So I'm going to go back to my pivot table fields, right click, field settings, and I'm going to summarize by average. Hit OK. And that's interesting. Now I can kind of look at um, which seasons brought in the most number of viewers on a per episode basis. And it looks like it's eyeballing these years. 1986 was the, big, was the biggest year. Um, well, actually, 2004 was the biggest year probably because that was like when the uh, show stopped airing. At 30.8 million per viewers per episode, 1986 was the second most at 30.1. And um, that's already some interesting interesting analysis I can just do. Let's look at the field list, see what other things I can pull in. I have episode number written by, duration, summary. I can also pull in the rating, the share, and let's also make sure that the, the rating and shares are the averages. Average of the rating, field settings, average. Oh, for some reason it's not getting the right number, but we can fix that in a bit. Average. So why is it dividing by zero? It's probably because in my rating column, I wonder if they're, these numbers are not formatted correctly. So let's go back to these numbers and see how this is formatted. Can I format this as a number? Let's put this as one, hit OK. And let's see if that fixes by refreshing this. Hmm. Not sure why. Let's go back. This is where you have to do some debugging to figure out why this is leading to potential errors. Yeah, so for some reason, the pivot table is not, not picking this up at the rating column, which is formulaic, formulaic column, as a number. My thinking is that there might be an extra space in here somehow. Let's just rem let's call it, let's put a trim and see if this fixes it in the formula. And let's refresh the pivot table again. Nope, that wasn't it. So let's see what else could be causing. Oh, for some reason I my trim didn't actually make it into the formula. Trim a parentheses, a parentheses here. Let's take a look to see if this now has a trim. Okay. Let's refresh the pivot table now. Nope, still not figuring it out. So what could be causing a divide by zero error or not even, it's not even figuring out how to pick these numbers up. I wonder if we can do some kind of like, uh, let's see if I do this. If I take the number times two, so it definitely figures, it definitely knows the number in here. But I wonder why, maybe if I just do it times one, drag this down, let's see if this fixes it. These are just like random tricks. There we go. So for some reason, if you just leave this by itself without the times one, it's, I think it probably thinks this is, Excel probably still thinks that this is like a text, text field, even though in the format cells it says number. So I'm just gonna do a multiple by, multiple by multiply by one in all these uh, the rating and share columns. Drag this down, and now if I refresh this pivot table, 
this uh, these numbers are pulling correctly. There we go. I'm just going to remove some of the decimal places here as well, just so it looks uh, nice and tidy. So number one decimal place. Hit OK. And then maybe make the share also one decimal place as well. One decimal place. Hit OK. So there we go. Now within the year, if I want to, I can drag in the episode number, pull it right here into the rows, and now I can look at a nice consolidated view of year and the total. And I really don't care about this view because each row is already an individual episode number in the in the actual raw data. So what I really care about is trying to find ways to summarize this in an interesting, interesting way. So right now we have year, which is an interesting way to collect the data. We can maybe pull out the year and look at the directed by and see which um, which directors led to that had the most number of uh, the most number of viewers. And that's could be an interesting way of looking at the data. We could also pull in the writ the writers. So this one might be a little more difficult to look at because there's so many writers for the show. So I'm gonna go remove that for now. And I'm just gonna pull in the year. So now we have this really interesting um, pivot table. I could also me put the written directed by in the filters in the dropdown in the pivot table. So I can look at which people I want to look at in terms of just the directors. Maybe I want to only look at um, Ben Weiss and Kevin S. Bright. You can see they were, these two were the directors for various episodes from 1995, 2004. And then you can also see who the viewers were for, what the average viewership, the rating, and the average share was for those, um, for those writer, for those directors. Um, the last thing I might want to do, this is really to make it interesting for other people to look at this data, is to create a kind of like interactive dashboard. So I'm just going to duplicate this, duplicate this pivot table worksheet. Call this one like dashboard or something. Oops, dashboard. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to. Oops, I'm not sure why it's not letting me. Okay, uh, dashboard. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make all the cells white. I like it making my dashboards looking nice and clean. Um, and let's start to play with a slicer with this data set. So let's go to pivot table analyze and let's go to insert slicer. And we're going to insert, insert a slicer for the, let's say for the year for now, let's see what happens. Hit okay. And here you can see I have a nice little slicer that looks at the year and you can make this slicer a little more interesting or a little more easier to use by clicking on this little, um, uh, Let's go right, right click the slicer, go to slicer settings. And I think there's a way to make the columns appear differently. No, it's not here. Let's take a look here. If I expand this, no. This just allows you to click on multiple selections. Um, let's see, I think it's got, oh, here we go, number of columns. I like to have multiple columns in my slicers. Let's say three. And now you can see I have like, I can click on multiple years. And if I click on, let's say 1984, it should just filter this to be just the year within my pivot table. Um, I'm gonna select everything for now. And I'm actually gonna drag out the year from my pivot table because I don't need to know the year because um, by default, whatever I select here will give me the individual years. It kind of depends on how you want to look at the data, but let's say I only want to look at data for 1984. I can just deselect all these years and you'll show me this is the, the data for just that year. Um, but sometimes if you want to look at individual years, you might want to put the year column back in. But let's say I want to see how our ratings, our viewership and ratings were for 2004, 2003. I can just click on those two years, deselect 1988. And I can now see all the viewership, the ratings, and the average share just for those two years. Um, if I, would, I think I actually like having the year, call, year field back in my rows. 
So this just lets me look at the final data and I can always look at this grand total row to see the total data for my uh, data set. Um, I might also want to, instead of having directed by as a drop down here in my pivot table filter, I can also add in a slicer for the director. So let's go to pivot table analyze, insert slicer, and let's go to the directed by column, hit okay. And I'm going to give this also three different columns. And let's expand the slicer out. And it looks like a bunch of, and what's kind of neat is like I can actually hit on, I can select individual directors. And you'll see that the years automatically highlight depending on which one you select. It's kind of cool. And then you always have, you can always scroll up to see. Oh, so I can see here these these uh, writers were not actually. Um, I guess they didn't. I'm not sure why these are considered why these are blank, but I can click on individual writers and then their data just for their rows for their years will show up here in the pivot table. So there's a lot more we can do here, but I just wanted to show how even with a simple data set from this friend's list of data, you can pull in some really interesting information and start playing with a pivot table uh, to do some exploratory analysis of the data. And then on the dashboard, this is where you can put in slicers and other, um, we can also utilize this, uh, this insert timeline. Um, we could actually use that to figure out like, to, to scroll through to see how the data changes as you go through different years. Um, I think I need to actually put in the date to make that happen. Let's put in the date here. And let's see if I can insert a timeline. Nope, we can't do that. Field format as date. Oh, interesting. It says that this column for some reason is not formatted as a date. Let's do that right now. Let's format all of column A to be a date. Hit OK. Then refresh our pivot table. And now let's try to insert a timeline. Insert timeline. Still can't do it. Okay, well, we can figure that out later, but just wanted to show how you can do some really interesting things already just with, with regular pivot table slicers based off of certain columns within your data set.